Hi everybody, it's Pollo Delmar in San Francisco, and I have been getting a lot of requests for a brand new makeup video on my YouTube channel. It's been long overdue, and we're going to jump into it. Before we do though, first I need to go get a quick shave. Meanwhile, while I'm doing that, why don't you follow me on social media? If you want to find out how I, my skincare routine before applying makeup, that's in a separate video. I'm going to put a link right there for you. Trust me. All right, the first step that we're going to do here, I'm going to be using a water cloud primer from Cover Effects. I'm in love with some of the Cover Effects products. If you're going to see me look over here, it's because I got a little mirror over here, and I'm going to begin smoothing this primer on. It definitely has a little bit of dimethicone in it, which is going to help the makeup smooth on, but mostly it just feels really nice on the skin. Because I'm extremely concerned about lines and wrinkles around my eyes, I'm going to use the Smashbox Primerizer just in my under eye area because that's an area that I find fine lines and wrinkles really creep into and I really don't want it. It's time to begin gluing down my eyebrows. There's an entire video dedicated to this, so I'm not going to include it here, all right? I've got my TV pan stick in 6W, which is the color of my most of my face. Well, it was until I got a little bit of a tan. Damn you, tan goes on under my chin, my entire jawline. I'd like to remind you that you're going to leave this area free of this color, okay? We're also going to do the hairline. Then I'm going to use my trusty beauty blender. I got a brand new one. I'm just breaking it in with you guys right now. I can't wait. We're going to fully immerse this in the water. I'll squeeze it out. You just want it moist. I'm going to bring it down the, the brown down to just above my eyebrows, but I am again leaving this center portion clear, right? It's also very important in my mind that I bring my foundation color all the way to my collarbone, and ultimately I'm going to blend it into my chest too because I don't use a breastplate, so I want that illusion that my skin is one continuous color to go all the way down to my boobs. I'm purposely letting you see all the way to my chest because people often ask if I've got implants no i don't have implants don't forget the sides of your nose okay buffing it along the underneath of my nose as well i'm going to take my highlight color which by my rule of thumb is always three shades lighter than my foundation this was a 6w what do you think this one is 3w so it's a 3w i'll let you get a look and an idea of where this goes then i'm going to use the opposite end of my beauty blender the little pointy one and begin blending this out I'm bringing it up to like around my eye, but I'm going to leave that eye area blank. Quick reminder, this is not necessarily the right way to do your makeup. Might not even be the best way to do your makeup. It's just how I do my makeup. And I'm constantly learning new tricks. So don't think that this is the definitive way that one would do drag makeup. This is called being buildable, so you just build it, you put it on, and if it's not enough, then you come back with more. I didn't do too much up there because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work the makeup up into that area, but I definitely want to start to cover the dark areas of where my brows were. I'm trying not to brown my forehead because it makes creases. This is when a bitch wish she could afford Botox. Adding a little bit more to the tip. Just the tip. If you've watched my much older videos, you're going to recognize that my makeup style as well as my makeup application procedures have changed a lot. That's because I'm growing as an artist. I'm learning new things. I would hope that what you were doing 10 years ago, you do a different way now too, if you've learned something new and a better way to do it, right? You can see the really stark line where these two colors meet. And now I'm gonna go back to the using the round in. Remember, that's what I applied my darker foundation color with. So I'm just gonna come along that edge and begin patting and pressing. That's gonna blend it. Same thing along the sides of the nose. We have a visitor. Just a mailer that came in the mail, so I'm gonna make this my cheek contour. My foundation is done, it's time for us to contour. I just made us a card. And I'm going to use an old makeup sponge, and I'm gonna use one of my new favorite products. The Custom Color Drops from Cover Effects. They look like this. It's pure pigment. So, it is full, full, full coverage. I, it has a little dropper, and I'm just gonna put it along the edge I lay it where it, mat it meets up with my ear over here and close to the side of my mouth down here. See how dark that is? You might wonder, why didn't I use my beauty blender? Well, I didn't use my beauty blender because of the fact that this is so highly pigmented 
if I placed it directly onto my beauty blender, it would saturate it with color. So and I'm going to come along it and I'm going to begin to blend that out. The contour is really adding shadows to your face to create depth and dimension. Now I'm going to use that same sponge and I'm going to come along the bottom of it again because I want it to be more saturated down there with pigment. And now I'm, this time I'm just going to buff it up with the sponge itself. You can even turn it over and use the light in just to tap along it if you want to blend that out a little bit more to make that color blend more evenly. And then, ooh, she got a cheekbone now. I'm going to use the same sponge and I'm going to come along over here. For me, I want to cut my square jawline, so I'm going to come up, I'm going to round it off. Do you see how that's happening? It went from this to visually the lighter part pops more. And when I have hair there, it's going to cover this. So it's going to look like a shadow. Pull it down back here too. I want it under my chin as well. The Beauty Blender is moist and it's going to help to smooth all that pigment out. Now scroll. Another old makeup sponge. This one's obviously much lighter. Another. A second custom color drop, my highlight color. Again, just at the edge. I'm going to come in right here where the wedge meets and I'm going to hit right at the edge of the, the dark. Not only does it clean up the line, it also is going to give me that highlight right next to the dark, which makes it even pop more. Now I'm going to take the end of my beauty blender, the eggy, the pointy part of the egg, and just touch it up. We're going to repeat on this side. Because this is pure pigment, it's almost like white out. I want to be in the damn video so bad. Another thing I love about the custom color drops, they almost, it's almost like they mattify and turn into powder afterward. The cheekbones are pretty snap. Why do you darken this part of your head with your makeup? That's because that's where your hairline sits. And if that darkness adds a distinct difference between, it looks like a shadow between where your face is and where your hair is. When you're using this dark pigment, it's always easier to make things a bit darker than it is to make them lighter. So I start way up at the edge because that can be dark. And then I'll blend it down. My wig certainly will not be sitting back here. So a little bit of this is underneath the wig line and that allows me to blend it down and into place. Going back to the beauty blender. I bring it down right next to the corner of my eye. It's just easier, I'll cover that later. This tip changed the game for me. Using a moist beauty blender to apply your powders gives such an airbrushed finish. A Cover FX translucent powder. This one is medium deep. So I dabbed it into the powder. It looks a little bit like cocoa. And then I'm gonna begin buffing it in. It's setting so smooth and so perfect. But putting it on with that damp beauty blender allows it to sort of just meld right into the makeup. It is a game changer. So since I'm already doing that, I'm going to come along my jawline. I might as well recreate the same thing down here. Anywhere that I've got it dark, I'm adding a little bit of this to start setting that makeup. Just so that the brown doesn't get into that highlight color. Tap it. All of this contour is set. Now I'm going to begin setting the highlighted areas. For this, I'm going to be using a translucent powder from Laura Mercier. It's Laura Mercier. Don't say Laura Mercer, okay? I once again re-wet. I'm going to use the dip, the pointy end of my egg, which is the highlight color. I'm going to just dip it into this. You can see a little bit of powder. And I'm going to begin patting and pressing that in along the sides of my nose. Those smile lines are a killer. They're such a bitch center of my forehead. I'm not worried about this overlapping with the brown areas because A, this is translucent and in a moment I will come back with my other end with the brown in it and just sort of buff that out and blend. I'm just trying to set this area. I'm going to use the very, very pointy end of this just to get right up against it. And since this Cover FX custom color drops already dry fairly matte, this is already mostly set. I'm just giving it an extra layer. So I'll get under the nose. I'm going to come back with the brownish in just to buff that out. Now we blended it again. I'm going to use a nice big fluffy brush. This one happens to be from Clinique. Just dip that brush in just a little extra powder just to powder this area a little bit more. So everything that we wanted to do in terms of foundation and highlights pretty much done except around my eye for a very good reason because I am going to come up here and begin to build out my upper eye and if stuff falls out I want to be able to just sort of not deal with that right now. If necessary, I could almost erase this and just blend it back in. But fingers crossed, that's not going to happen.